Dave Ramsey's Baby Step 6 is probably the most controversial step that many people in the personal finance or the FIRE community talk about. The question was brought up during one of the private coaching sessions with a client of mine and it wasn't the only time that it was brought up. And the question was, should I pay off my house now or invest the difference? And I'm going to show you the complete comparison chart of how investing the difference of just $500 a month made me over six figures over the last seven years and how things would have turned out if I had paid off my home early if I had followed Dave Ramsey's Baby Step 6. And back in 2016, I seriously considered paying off my home faster to become debt free, but I decided to invest the difference instead and I'm gonna show you the result of that throughout this video. And if you don't know who Dave Ramsey is, he's one of the biggest radio talk hosts in the world that focuses on personal finances. Before I dive deep into his Baby Step 6, I just wanna say that I have a lot of respect for Dave Ramsey and his personalities because they have done a lot for the people in the personal finance community. And back in October, I met Christina Ellis, George Camel, and Ken Coleman in Nashville when my wife and I went there for a wedding. No matter how much you disagree with their fundamentals, we can't deny the fact that they're consistently helping people get out of debt so they can start investing for their retirement. And let's just take all of the politics aside and if you just pay attention to what they teach to get people out of debt, they have a phenomenal program to get people started on their debt-free journey. And I'm a financial coach myself, and I teach people to get out of debt, budget, and invest in their financial independence. But I don't teach Dave Ramsey's Baby Step program to my clients. Just because I respect Dave and his team, it doesn't mean that I agree with everything they say or teach. And I'm a firm believer that there's not a one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to personal finances. And what I do on my FIRE journey is going to be entirely different from yours. When I paid off $110,000 in credit card debt, personal loans, TSP loans, and car loans, I didn't exactly follow Dave Ramsey's Baby Step 2. It wasn't because I disagreed with his Baby Step 2, but it was because I had high interest debts that I struggled to make my minimum payments. And to be completely honest, I didn't know how the Baby Step program worked when I was on my debt-free journey from 2014 to 2016, but I still managed to pay off over $110,000 in consumer debt in two years. So the method of paying off my debt is not going to be the same as how you or anyone else do it, right? But anyway, let's focus on his Baby Step 6 because that's what this video is all about. Dave Ramsey's Baby Step number 6 is to pay off your home as soon as possible. So if you owe a mortgage on your home, he wants you to invest up to 15% of your income towards retirement back in baby step four, invest however much you can for your kid's college in baby step five, and put whatever you have left towards the mortgage. If you already have a 30 year fixed mortgage, then he wants you to pay extra towards the principal and make the same payment as a 15 year fixed mortgage payment. Even if you already have a 15 year fixed mortgage rate, Dave Ramsey's baby step six is to pay off your house as soon as possible, but only after you invest at least 15% of your income. He also recommends that your 15 year fixed mortgage payment is below 25% of your take home income. By taking out a 15 year fixed mortgage rate, not only are you paying off your house, 15 years sooner than the 30 year fixed mortgage rate, but you're also saving money on the interest that you pay in the long term. So let me bring up the mortgage chart here. And according to Redfin, the median sale price in Las Vegas right now is $408,000. And you can look up Redfin to find out the median sale price in your area. The 15 year fixed mortgage rate at the time I'm recording this video in March, 2023 is 6.5%. So if I follow, Dave Ramsey's plan by making a 20% down payment on the home for $81,600, then the loan amount will be around $326,000. The PI payments for a 15 year fixed mortgage rate would be $2,800 uh, a month. And this doesn't include property tax or insurance. And let me go to the 30 year fixed mortgage rate instead. The 30 year fixed mortgage rate would be 7.2% at the time I'm recording this video. The PI payments will be reduced from $2,800 to about $2,200 a month. So that's a difference of $600 a month. And if I follow Dave Ramsey's home buying guide, 
$2,800 divided by 25% would be $11,200 in take home income. So $11,200 is how much I need to make in after tax income to maintain the 25% threshold. But with $2,200 a month, then the threshold is reduced to $8,800 a month in take home income. And don't forget to download my financial independence resources, including all of these spreadsheets I just showed you for absolutely free by visiting firesetchair.com slash contact. You should also check out my Fireside Chair shop to check out the books and equipment I use at firesidechair.com slash shopping. So with the difference of $600 a month, there are pros and cons to taking out a 15 year fixed mortgage. The total interest I would pay with a 30 year fixed mortgage rate would be $471,000 as opposed to $208,000 over the course of 15 years. That's a difference of $263,000 in total interest, right? You would also get to own your home outright with no debt in 15 years instead of 30 years. If I'm buying a house in my 50s, I would seriously consider using a 15 year instead of a 30 year fixed mortgage rate because of risks. I would be more risk averse in my 50s. So I would rather pay off my home in 15 or maybe even 10 years so that I can retire with no mortgage debt. But the downside of having a 15 year fixed mortgage rate is the higher uh, mortgage payment that could take away the opportunity cost. The $600 in difference may not be much to some of you, but it could make a big difference in the long term. So let's say I take out a 30 year fixed mortgage rate instead, and I'm going to put that $600 a month into a taxable brokerage account in the S&P 500 index fund. So that would be $7,200 a year with an 8% average annual return. I'm going to have $211,000 invested in 15 years and $880,000 invested in 30 years. So theoretically, I would break even in 16 years by having $235,000 invested and owing $235,000 on my mortgage. If I decide to pay off my home with the investment I made on the side with $600 a month, then I could save $140,000 in interest and have my house completely paid off in 16 years with a 30 year fixed mortgage. But the downside of investing in difference is that we don't know how the market will perform because it's completely outside of our control. History tells us though that it has continued to appreciate in value, but no one can guarantee the future result, right? So if I'm in my 50s, I might not have enough time in the stock market to see those dollars appreciate in value because 15 years from 50 years, old, uh, 50 years of age will put me at 65 years old. I might not have the physical or mental capability to work as much as I did in my 20s, 30s, or 40s. By the way, I just launched a new live stream program on my channel, which include live Q and A's and group coaching sessions about the fire movement, stock market, real estate, and any current events in the world. With the private membership program, you'll have access to my private Facebook group and group coaching sessions to discuss your financial independence journey. You can check out my YouTube channel for more information about the private membership program. You can also schedule a free one-on-one 20 minute financial coaching session by visiting firesetchercom slash coaching to discuss your personal finances. And back in 2016, when I paid off $110,000 in consumer debt, I seriously considered putting extra money toward the principal of my mortgage to pay off my house as soon as possible. And I was 30 years old at, at the time, and I was actually going to be 31 that year. I really went back and forth to deciding if I should pay down my house or invest that money. In the end, and I'm really glad that I made that decision, in the end, I decided to invest the difference, and I'm gonna show you the result. And I purchased my house in 2014 for one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. You're not you're not gonna find that price anywhere in Vegas anymore. That's for sure. My mortgage loan though was a thirty year fixed rate of four point two five percent in August two thousand fourteen, and the PNI payments were nine hundred and four dollars a month. If I were to pay it off within fifteen years, I would have needed to put in an extra five hundred dollars a month toward the principal of my mortgage instead. I invested $500 a month in my S&P 500 index fund, but only after I paid off my debt in 2016. So if I had a, uh, so I had a late start by two years on this because I bought my house in 2014 and then I started investing in 2016. The average annual return I got between 2016 and 2022 from investing $500 a month was 11% in annualized return. That's $42,000 in principal 
and $16,000 in earnings and interest in just seven years. And I'm obviously investing way more than $6,000 a year now, but I just want to show you these numbers based on how much money I would need to pay off my house in 15 years. So 11% is a lot, and that's largely due to the great bull market run we saw. And I'm just going to predict that it's about 8% in average return for the next eight years. By the end of the 15-year investment, I would have $90,000 in principal and about $87,000 in interest and earnings. That's pretty incredible just by looking at my interest and earnings growth, right? The ending balance will be $176,000 with the S&P 500 investment by the end of 15 years. That's pretty good considering I had a two year late start on investing. Now, let me look at my mortgage loan here. By the end of the 15 year loan, I would have $99,000 remaining on my mortgage loan. So not only that, that I'll be able to pay off the loan with the investment I made, but I'll have over $77,000 remaining on my S&P 500 index fund. If I had followed Dave Ramsey's Baby Step 6, I would have missed out on the interest and earnings that I would have gained in my index fund. But it's easier to Monday morning quarterback this whole thing, right? If I had paid off my house 10 or 15 years early, then I would have that $950 a month in cash flow starting in 2030. Mathematically, it makes more sense to invest in the difference, but mentally, it would be nice to have my home paid off. But am I gonna cash out my investments right now to pay off the house? Not right now, I'm not. But it's a good feeling to have that I can pay off my house whenever I want though, right? And this $500 a month is going into my taxable investment account and not into a retirement account like uh, the Roth, uh, Roth IRA or 401k. This is the money that I can gain access to whenever I want. While I'm still in my 30s, I choose to invest more so that I can achieve financial independence and retire early. Not to mention that I refinanced my home in 2020, so it's now 2.8% instead of 4.25%, which reduced my mortgage payment from $900 a month to $750 a month. Could we see interest rates go that low again? Possibly, but probably not for a while. And as my income continued to increase, I increased my savings rate from 25% to 50%, and now I'm saving over 70% of my income. But is it wrong uh, to pay down the house like Dave Ramsey teaches his audience to do? Not necessarily, but I think it really depends on each person's age and financial situation. If I'm in my late 40s going into my 50s, I would prefer to pay down the house before I reach 60, and it's all about risk management at this point. And I don't wanna go into my normal retirement age or at age 60 and have a balance my mortgage. So if I'm following Dave Ramsey's Baby Step 6, I'll make sure to assess my risk and age first before I start throwing extra money into the mortgage. And there's also nothing wrong with paying off your house early in your 30s or 40s. I don't think anyone ever regrets paying off their home early so they can have that extra cash flow going into their investments. I also agree with Dave that we should maintain our housing expenses below 25% of our income. The reason is that your typical expenses could take up to 50% of your income, if not more. You wanna make sure you have room in your budget to save for both short and long-term savings and investments. Many people overpay for their homes in 2020 and 2021, and now they're paying over half of their income just in their mortgage payments. You wanna make sure that you don't bite more than you can chew, right? And if you wanna know more about how I invest in my financial independence and retire early, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.